ACC series for Louisville. A chance to win an ACC series for the first time since April of 2023 against Boston College. They'll play small ball Zion Rose. And the Cardinals tried to force Florida State to field their positions yesterday. They did not that time. Whitaker gets it done. One pitch, one out. And a good way to start the game for the Knowles and Whitaker. Zion Ross was the designated hitter. And to Dylan Hoy, who moves to third base, by the way, today. He's swinging early. Two pitches and two outs for O to Cantu. I'll tell you what, I couldn't get a better start than that. Two pitches, two outs, like you said. And again, Whitaker, you're going to see a guy who's going to throw three pitches in the zone, four strikes. Going to throw that sinker down, going to have a good slider and a real good changeup. JT Benson's got a take after two first pitch outs. It's a strike. You see Roy's, Hoy, Benson, Klein. Some differences in this lineup. Napleton, Keelan, King Jr., Humphrey, Alicea. We'll get the start at second. Humphrey's been solid so far this weekend. He's got hits in both games, including a home run in the series opener. And you see already what makes Whitaker so dominant is Florida State's number three. He pounds the strike zone. A guy who know who, exactly who he is. Great off speed, a fastball that can get up to about 94. He lives in the low 90s. Well, that was a pretty good pitch. Tried to dot the outside corner there of home plate umpire Mike Mazza. Yeah, good fastball there. Just didn't quite come back enough. Benson works it back to 2-2. Off speed, nicks it. He'll stay alive. JT Benson was one for four with an RBI. In yesterday's game two win, 0 for three in game one. Whitaker trying to work a quick first inning, and he does. Snaps a good breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Lodis, Jackson West, Drew Faroe batting ninth. And so some notable differences. Three changes from yesterday. You saw Jackson West will catch again instead of Holbrook. Cal Fisher gets the start. The first true freshman position player for Link Jarrett to get a start here this season. And of course, Ross instead of Max Williams. Yeah, we talked about it early in the year. A little difference. Ross is kind of like a spark plug. He just finds ways to get on base. Bunt, hit by pitch, base hits, just like that one right there to the right side. Ross's M.O. finding ways to get on base. A true table setter for Florida State. He's got a leadoff single. And Cam Smith, the power hitting third baseman, is due up. Chris Chavez, the first rubber match of the year for Florida State, which means the first one for us to call. Yeah, it is, and it's surprising. Here's Cam Smith. That one skips away. Ross easily down to second base. You know, we just said it, too, about what Ross brings. You know, even as a lefty, you got to worry about Ross. He was 6-6 six to six in stolen bases this year. Worrying about him. You got a guy like Cam Smith up to bat. You end up getting a wild pitch. He moves into scoring position already. Florida State was 14 and 0 at home up until last night. First home loss of the season at Hauser as Smith fouls it back one and one. And for Louisville, their SID Stephen Williams was telling me it's the first time Louisville has forced a rubber match in Tallahassee. That's even crazier. And the Cardinals, we talked about it. It's been eight ACC series in a row that they've lost. Could change here today. Oh boy, Napleton struggling. And Ross headed down to third. Bit of a carbon copy of how the Knolls struggled yesterday. Yeah, and they, they, 
They said they announced wild pitch there. I, that's more of a pass ball. If you're the pitcher, I mean, that, that ball's got to get caught unless you had some cross up there. You see this right here. It's a little breaking ball. He just, just whiffed it. That's going to be a loud foul ball. That yeah, well smoked foul right there. People need to be watching out. Cam Smith, two for four yesterday, extends his hitting streak to five, and he's now reached in 35 consecutive games on base. That's an impressive number. You start getting over that 20 mark for just on base stuff, especially at the college level. It's pretty impressive. Watching Cam Smith take batting practice earlier today, everything was focused back half, back side, trying to go the other way. Here's the 3-2. On the ground, it'll get a run home for Florida State. Throw made, and he put out one down. Ross touches home, and Cam Smith brings home the first run for Florida State in the bottom of the first. Yeah, he got around that pitch a little bit, but did just enough to get Ross in. Good start for the Knowles. Now to James Tibbs. Fastball there off the inside of his foot. Junior from Marietta. James, an avid Braves fan. Him and I had a nice conversation earlier today. How about those Bravos against the Phillies bullpen yesterday? I have a soft spot for them, too. That's who drafted me out of FSU, so I grew up one Dale, being a big Dale Murphy fan growing up. Well, there's a lot of Braves fans listening as well. A mixture of Louisville and Florida State fans who root for what they call the team of the South in the MLB. Opening day this week all around the league. Tibbs up the middle. Oh, that ball had eyes. He's going to have an infield hit. A nice play by Keelan to keep it in the infield, but he had no shot. No, and I'll tell you what, I know Tibbs, as a, being a professional hitter, you see this right here. Breaking ball just drives it back up the middle. But you're right, it definitely had some eyes. But I know Tibbs like, I'll take it right now. Facing left on left every game so far. Left hand every now and then, you're like, can I see a right-handed pitcher one time, please? Chris, I got a text from a buddy of mine who's a Louisville fan. He goes, I'm a Reds fan, Cincinnati's right on the other side of the river. Yeah, and it is. True. It's right there. James Hibbs is first, a fan favorite here at Hauser. And Jaime Ferrer, two for four last night. That one misses low. Jaime has now reached base in 31 consecutive games. Not to be outdone by Cam. He's creeping right behind him. The proud native of Puerto Rico hitting 330. Nine bombs on the year. His power a tick up from last season. As he tried to go backside, but pushes it foul and well out of play. Yeah, I think all his numbers, I think, are going to be better this year just because he's, he's looked, his approach at the plate has been a lot better. He's still the aggressive swinger, but he has been laying off a lot of the pitches that he was swinging at some last year. A snap throw in. He was telling me that when he went to the Cape Cod League this summer at Brewster, they really worked on his swing plan and finding ways to elevate the baseball. He's a very line drive approach, and so they worked on some things to get the ball in the air. And again, Napleton struggling. He can't keep it in front of him right now. Tibbs will take second. Yeah, we talked about Friday night, or I'm sorry, third. Success they had yesterday being a key to the victory. Now the Knowles have some early success. That's a good breaking ball from Phillips. Yeah. Chavez showing me the changeup up here. <laughs> and, and, Tibbs was doing change. The, and Tibbs was doing the same thing from second base. <laughs> 
Off speed makes it two and two. A lot of the hitters yesterday from both sides were complaining about the shadows at six o'clock, saying it was impossible to see the ball early because the pitchers started in the sunlight and the hitters in the box were in the shadows. Yeah, that, that is a big advantage for the pitchers for sure. It's a big strike out there for Phillips, two down. Another great off-speed pitch and better job right there by Napleton to block that one up. Keep it in front of him. Well, you see this right here, that's a real sharp late breaking ball right there. Ferrer just not able to hold up. Great pitch by Phillips, good job by Napleton. But you talked about the shadows, and when you do have those shadows, it is very difficult for the hitter. And I even think it may have played a part in some of the airs FSU had, too. Ball coming in and out of the shadows and in the sunlight. Marco Dingis, who has worn out Cardinal pitching, six for eight through two games. Four extra base hits, a grand slam, five RBIs. He's actually hit for the cycle this weekend. Had that triple in game two. Really impacts the baseball. And so a heavy diet of off speed to keep him off balance. Yeah, Phillips starting to settle in a little bit here with that off speed stuff. Phillips went four innings against Wake Forest. Three hits, two earned runs. Last weekend in Winston-Salem. That is a pitcher's park up there at Wake, excuse me, a hitter's park up there. It is a nightmare for pitchers with the wind blowing out. And they are short dimensions. You can get it out of right center over there in Wake Forest and hit it about 348. Yeah, and see, that's crazy. Kind of like Clemson, Clemson's 373 now to center field. And the wind was blowing out all weekend last weekend while you had so many home runs by both teams. Uh, band box, no doubt. One, two. Tried to mix it up, come back with a heater. At 91, Phillips can get it up to about 94, but lives high 80s, low 90s. And Dan McDonald telling us earlier today he will be available as long as he can give us. They've got a fresh bullpen ready to go. Only Ty Biven really unavailable at this point. Caleb Corbett could be available. We'll yep. see how it goes. Start. He pitched on Friday night. Should be available. Ty Start. A lot of Seminole fans asking about Ben Barrett for Florida State in the bullpen. And they're saying Ben's about one to two weeks away, just started throwing again. So that is a pivotal piece for what Mike Aposi wants to have on his pitching staff. Meanwhile, 1 0, Florida State. Here in the bottom of the first, the 1 2 pitch. Misses inside, 2 and 2. Good job by Din just there laying off that breaking ball. It's a good pitch. Tibbs gets his lead at second, two down. 2-2 two, two pitch. Trying to go to that back foot. You see Din just nodding his head. He's picked up on something. Yeah, and you see Din just has turned this into a great at bat right here. Fans are filing in. I see both sets of bleachers, left and right fields, are starting to fill to the brink. We've got a good one, rubber match, 3-2. Hit hard on the ground, Alisea able to stay down on it and make the play. Inning over, Phillips keeps the damage to one. It'll be Klein. First career start and the first true freshman position player to start for Florida State. They are testing Connor Whitaker with the short game and see what so far, because I'm pretty good at PFP. Yeah, exactly right. I was just going to say the PFP has been working. They've gone to the left side, they've gone to the right side. He's made it look easy. You see here, bounces off the mound like a cat. Connor Whitaker, who started the year on the midweeks, first pitch, smacks it in there with the glove of West for a strike to Napleton. They originally had him as a Sunday starter. The Butler series on opening weekend got messed up with rain. So they only play two games as Napleton swings and misses. And so Whitaker, who hadn't thrown yet to start the year, they didn't want to keep him waiting. So they threw him at JU in the midweek. Link Jarrett goes, well, we need to keep him on schedule, right? 
And we'll figure out a way to get him back into the weekend rotation. That one just misses on the outside corner. And so Whitaker spends the first couple of games in the midweeks, shuts it down for FSU against JU, FGCU, USF. That one comes inside, nearly clips Napleton. And then they found a way to get him back again in ACC play to start. And what kind of advantage, Chris, do you have a veteran like this who can completely own the strike zone? I mean, you're seeing it already today. I mean, even his misses are so small. And to have a guy that can come in on a Sunday when a lot of these teams are trying to figure still out who their Sunday guy is, they're mixing and matching. You've got a solid guy in here who can come in and fill it up and so aggressive in the strike zone. It speaks wonders and for what you can do for your team with that. Yeah, another strikeout for Whitaker. That is his second now through two innings as Klein goes down. That time to the fastball, ran it to 92. And yeah, kept it down in the zone, that sink. He's got good sink today. And you'll see him trying to live about knee high. Not so, where he wants to be there. This is Gavin Keelan. Two down on the inning. There's that good change up by Whitaker. I apologize, I said that was Klein, it was Napleton. Klein was the bunt attempt. So two down on the inning. Here for the freshman, Keelan. Base not up the middle. Found a 2-0 fastball he liked and knew exactly what he wanted to do with it. First hit of the game for the Cardinals. And again, like you said, 2-0 looking for fastball, gets it, drives it right back up the box. Good piece of hitting. They like Gavin Keelan. Around Louisville. I think he's going to be a star in the future. A youngster. He can run a little bit. He's got three stolen base attempts on the year. Has converted on one of them. And this is Eddie King Jr. Yeah, and Keelan's also played a heck of a shortstop, too. This one will find center fields. Off the hands of Eddie King, but you see the strength to muscle it. Two hits back to back now with two down. That sets it up for Isaac Humphrey. And here's a guy who can definitely change the game on one swing. First game of the series, left the yard. His first at bat. Isaac Humphrey hit a moonshot. In game one of this series for a home run over that right field fence. Offers at the first pitch there. That's slicing. And it'll find the fans in left field bleachers. Humphrey <laughs> did have a base hit as well. In yesterday's game. Good change by Whitaker. Wouldn't be surprised if he may go back to it right here again. This one up the middle. It's going to be held there by Fisher. He's got a good throw. Runs coming home. They're going to say safe. And the run's going to score. Oh, Jackson West thinks he got Keelan. He wants a review immediately. It was heads up by, by Keelan to come home. Well, they were checking both. So we are tied at 1-1. 1-1. runs. They've tied it up. Both teams finding ways to play stationary baseball here. And 
Here's Alisea. Two on, two down. First pitch high and outside. This is Alisea's first start of the weekend. He's appeared already. And there for a strike, he showed bunt. Good fastball. Alex, the switch heading freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now you start to wonder if Connor sitting there while they were looking at the reviews kind of cooled him off a little bit. Swing and a miss on the fastball, two and two. Now Connor's kind of got him set up for whatever he wants really here. He could go change up, come back to fastball. Hadn't even thrown him a breaking ball yet. Center field, Ross has it measured, and he'll make the grab. Retires the side, but a two-out rally from Louisville. Has Chavez, I'm Mario Masudi, our entire crew here from Tallahassee. Daniel Cantu, wasting no time, offering it the first pitch. Florida State won game one, eight to three. Louisville wins game two, five to two. It's the first rubber match, as we mentioned, for Florida State of the year. And the first time Louisville's forced one in Tallahassee in their program's history. Big shifts coming on Dylan Hoy. Getting out into right fields. Against the lefty Cantu. He shows bunt and fouls it into the Louisville dugout. Yeah, Cantu trying to take advantage of that shift. Kind of playing as a leadoff hitter right here, just finding a way to get on. You see the shift, third baseman out in right field. Louisville's been doing that a good bit on the lefties so far in this series. Eddie King Jr., who gets the start in center, he's shaded to right center as well. Cantu's still looking for his first hit of the weekend. Had a career night against the Florida Gators in Jacksonville on Tuesday. Five RBIs, three base hits, a monster home run to right center. A near crowd of 8,000 to watch Florida State win the series over Florida. And the full count, my goodness, air mailed. There's some booster seating down there. And I promise that caught them off guard. Oh, yeah. That made them jump a little bit. Behind the glass. Over there behind home plate. So the Knolls get their leadoff runner aboard for the second time in this game. Cal Fisher. Steps into the box. Hit a home run in his first career at bat as a Seminole. Excuse me, swing. Could be two to second for one. And the 5-4-3 double play is reported by the Cardinals. That was Hoy to Alisea. Yeah, you get a good pitch by Phillips here. Fisher trying to hold the swing up, turns into a check swing double play. Good turn by the Cardinals. Jackson West, the second start of the weekend, the sophomore from Tallahassee. Older brother Gage played for Florida State back in the mid 2000s. Yeah. 
Chopped on the ground. It's one and two. Wes hitting 366. A patient eye at the plate. 11 walks to just five strikeouts. He's got an on-base percentage of 500. Yeah, he just, I say it every time. I mean, he just grinds out at bats. One, two, on the ground. And Klein steps on the bag. The double play makes it a quick inning. Here for Nulls in fall ball. I'll tell you what, it's... It's a great experience with foul ball right here, strike one. Um, when he told us that story, I was like, man, more, more teams need to go do what he's doing because I can't think of a better experience just for bonding as your team, but also getting to get the fulfillment of helping some of these kids that are down there in third world countries and doing those things with them. Um, I, I, really thought, I really thought when Coach McDonald told us this story, I thought this was a great thing, and I, I do. I think more teams need to do this. That breaking ball snapping away from Zion Ross. Top of the order. Excuse me, Zion Rose. One, two to Rose. That misses two and two. Rose, who actually came in as a catcher. Tries to muscle it into left field, going back on it. Ferrer's not going to get there. It just kept carrying. He's trying for three. Rose, the throw, the tag, not in time. He's got a leadoff triple. We talked about it last night with Zion Rose and his base running abilities, what he does. He's so aggressive. You see right here, gets a pitch down and just the ball carries and Ferrer takes a route kind of in on it at first and then had to break back. And I think it just carried, kept carrying on him. Ferro tries to get it, but Zion's able to get underneath the tag. First pitch, swing and a miss to Hoy. Great base running by Zion Rose again, putting his team in a position to get a run. On the ground, score a run. Rose will touch home, Hoy delivers, Cardinals lead. Hey, good job by Hoy, just getting the job done, pulling the ball, guy in base, base running position, or scoring position, sorry, and he's able to drive him in. First pitch swing and Benson rips it into right. Fifth hit of the afternoon for Louisville. And you're starting to see the Cardinals aggressive, trying to find something in the zone early in counts. Because they know they're going to get it. I mean, like we talked about Whitaker, he's aggressive in the zone. He throws a lot of strikes. You know you're going to get strikes as a hitter. When you got hitters like Louisville has. With the batting average they have, they're, they know what they're doing at the plate. They have good approaches. Second time through the lineup. Matt Klein staring at a 1-0 count. Have to be careful with JT Benson at first. One of the best bag swipers in the ACC. He's got 17 of them already. That's a lot of bags this early in the season. You're talking Trey Turner, NC State numbers. Yeah. At this pace, for sure. Here's the 1-0. As Whitaker sets and delivers. Fouled back. Count is 2-1.
2 1. Foul down the first baseline, 2 and 2. Two, it goes to right here. Good change up that last pitch. Does he stay with the change up? Just give us something different. Benson gets his lead. He'll stay put on the ground. Back to Whitaker. He throws it to second for one. And the Knowles turn the double play. 1-6-3. Connor Whitaker has fielded his position. Pitch to Ferro now one and two finds the inside corner. Yeah, Ferro wasn't too happy about it. Neither, neither was the crowd. That was a little low and in. Ferro put out at first after the strikeout. And Phillips going to that good breaking ball. Gets Ferro to swing over it. First pitch to Ross is a strike. I do want to apologize. I said Dominican Republic was in Central America. It's in the Caribbean. And so, <laughs> Scalmum Unk on Twitter, thank you for letting me know. I'm sorry. There's a called X now. That one in there for a strike zone. I'm not an astronomer. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, you get, get it in the area code? You, did, you see what I did there, right? Yes. Astronomy has yeah. nothing to do with geography. Not, not okay. even a little bit. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm good at this, because yep. uh, I'd be in trouble. Ross on the ground. They played him shifted that way a little bit. Alisea was able to get to it faster that time, as he shaded more towards right field. And there's two away. And Phillips starting to dial it in a little bit and get comfortable. Two down quickly, and you're starting to see Phillips. Similarities to Webster yesterday, getting Florida State early to induce weak contact. And the Knowles admit it, they're a fastball hitting team. I was talking to Ty McGahee earlier, Florida State assistant coach. As Smith watches that low 2 and 0. And he said, We're trying not to lunge at some of these early off speed pitches because we hammer fastballs and firm stuff early in the count as well as anyone in the country. But these pitchability lefties have given the Knowles trouble. And that's why Webster pitched backwards all night last night. And you're starting to see a little bit of that. Phillips not as much. He's throwing the fastball a little bit more. But that big breaking ball he's got has kind of kept a lot of people kind of off balance today so far. Took him a little while to find it, bouncing it up there a little bit. And he's starting to dial it in a little bit more. 2-1. Phillips trying to stay with it, does. The throw, not in time, gets away. Not far enough as Smith was trying to dodge the ball as well. <laughs> he got tied up in between his legs there. And that was an adventure immediately for Phillips, who on his follow through was just trying to get back around and field this. Yeah, you see this one hopper, and he's trying to spin around, getting his head around. Thought he had it. Popped out of his glove. And the ball just got tangled up in Cam's legs. Here's James Tibbs. Oh, 
And so for Cam Smith, he's on base with a single. They are going to give him an infield hit. He's now got a six-game hitting streak and reached base in 36 consecutive games dating back to last season. See the good breaking ball by Phillips there. Tibbs trying to hit one off the circus tent, just pulls off just a bit. See the circus tent there. Tibbs, right field, hooking towards the foul pole. It is gone! Well, I just said him trying to hit one off the circus tent. Very next swing, he didn't quite get it to the circus tent, but he got it far enough out of the park to give the Knowles a one-run lead. See right here, fastball left on the inner half of the plate. Tibbs standing there just making sure it goes fair. Great job of keeping his hands inside the baseball right there. That is the 38th career home run for James Tibbs, number 11 on the season. He leads this Florida, St Florida State team in long balls. Thought he might start to do the Kirk Gibson, right? Start leaning, start <laughs> waving the ball back in. Giving it the hand gesture. And he gets his curtain call. That's got to feel good for James Tibbs. His most impactful swing of the weekend. And the Knowles take the lead right back off Riley Phillips. I'm going to tell you what, Phillips though, right, has gone right back into mode, though. Two change-ups in a row. Had Ferrer swinging over the top. Ferrer stays alive. Talking to some scouts before the weekend, they said James Tibbs has moved up the boards for this 2024 draft as much as any college player, any college hitter to date. And deservingly so. I mean, he's shown his maturity at the plate, how he's made in-game adjustments. He's even talking about it right there, how he kept his hands in on that ball. That ball may have actually been off the plate a little bit inside, but he shows his strength in being able to keep his hands inside the baseball and get that ball out of the ballpark. I talked to a national scout in Jacksonville in the middle of the week during the game against Florida, and he had flown all the way from California to Jacksonville the night before to see a couple of guys play. Okay, Jack Caglione was playing. If you don't know who that is, look it up. Yeah. Could go first overall. But he was looking at Cam Smith and James Tibbs as well. He said Tibbs could be a top 50 overall player in this draft, and that's serious cash. And it is, and, and he should be. I'll be honest with you. We can continue that conversation later on. As Ferrer goes down. First pitch from Whitaker just misses to Napleton. Back and forth so far in the early going. Florida State led 1-0 after one. Louisville ties it up in the second. Takes the lead in the third, bottom half of the third. James Tibbs, two-run shot, gives the Knowles the lead right back. This game means an awful lot to both of these sides, right? Louisville, 17 and 10, a win today makes them four and five in the ACC, 18 and 10 overall. Some momentum created on the road against a top 25 team. Well, I don't know what happened there for Whitaker. Just lost complete grip. Yeah, it was a slider that just got away from him, hit the bull. And for Florida State, they do have aspirations of hosting a regional. And you got to take care of home series. Teams who get top 16s, they find ways to close home series out. And they get enough series wins on the road to separate themselves from the pack. Yeah, and they've been great so far. FSU has, has been great so far in their midweek games. But you're right, you got to take care of business here. They need to win this rubber match. Um, but you're right, another great great opportunity for Louisville, though, if they can come in and win this rubber match to get them back on track. The Knowles are 4-4 four and four in the ACC. They've swept Notre Dame. They've been swept by Clemson. 
And this is the first test, really, of the season, of the grind, so to speak. This is the old seventh game in eight days. Yeah. Not a lot of rest this week. A lot of bus trips. Felt like classic minor league baseball. And yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Minor like minor league baseball. Not a lot of rest. And to be honest with you, that takes a toll on you too when you're not getting that rest, especially when you're used to being home early in the year when they were, and you're getting plenty of it. Now all of a sudden you're on a bus. You're not getting home till two in the morning. You still got schoolwork that you got to get done. Um, it really does make it difficult. And you spent a number of years playing in the Braves organization. You know all about the real grind of minor league baseball. It is a tough day today. I'll tell you what, I, you know, luckily enough, when the Braves, when I was in the Braves organization, our bus rides weren't horrendous. Uh, but when I played in the Marlins, you play in the Eastern League, and you're up in Portland, Maine, and your closest bus ride in Portland, Maine was eight hours. Yeah, that was uh, that wasn't much fun. There's a strike to Keel and Link Jarrett talking about earlier this week. It is a grind, and if you want to play at that level, you've got to learn to be able to compartmentalize pitch by pitch. You leave weekends behind you, good or bad, you focus on the very next at bat. Is that one foul from Keelan? And he said, you have big leaguers that you admire. Every one of you do. And he has a note that he posts on the inside of the clubhouse before you get into the dugout. It talks about the process and the day-to-day -day of being an elite baseball team. It's not about one good weekend. It's about every single day. It's the grind, and you got to like the grind if you want to be great. Base hit. Keelan's got another one. That one rolling to the wall. Louisville can fly. Napleton, are they going to wave him home? No, they're going to stop him at third. And into second with a double is Keelan. Louisville threatening to strike right back. Yeah, and I, I, I think they kind of were wanting to bring Napleton home, but I think it's a smart decision to hold him up. Second and third, nobody out now. I mean, you're still in great position. Don't take a chance of getting thrown out at home here. Yeah, just a nice hard hit ground ball. Cantu just not able to get off the bag. You know, it opens that hole when you're holding the base runner on. The double from Keelan will be his 12th of the season. That leads Louisville. And you see how hard he hit that ball, 98 miles an hour on the ground. And that ball got through the infield in a hurry. See some movement down on the Seminole pen. Couple yeah. guys running down there. Yeah, I think they're just moving around, getting loose. And their eyes peeled on this one. That's the sixth hit for Louisville against Whitaker. On the ground, that'll score another run. It's a long throw for Smith. Cantu able to make the grab. Nice work from Cantu to dig it out of the dirt. I also think he tried to deke Keelan into thinking that ball might have got to the backstop because you saw him swing his head around. I think he's a pretty pretty crafty first baseman. I think he's done this a while. Yeah, he's been around a while. We you know we talk about the you know the lack of respect. I think majority of people don't give first base, and that's a heck of a play he did picking that ball right there. We are tied. This ball hit hard into right. Tibbs, did he make the grab? Yes, he did, and he's gonna double up the runner at second. A web jet from the Nolds right fielder. What an afternoon so far. Daniel Cantu, Cal Fisher. Florida State's five, six, and seven. On, Do up here in the bottom of the fourth. Already been an action packed first three and a half innings. That it has. Defense, offense. Dinn just hit a ball on the screws in his first plate appearance, but right at Alisea at second. That was just the third time this weekend Louisville has retired Florida State's designated hitter. 
And Phillips still being careful with him. Three off-speed pitches in a row. East Lake High School. He played his prep ball in Tarpon Springs, the state of Florida. Watches that high. And it's a walk. The second for Phillips. See some activity in Louisville's pen as well. Guys getting loose, working a little bit more deliberately, deliberately to get ready. Yeah, Carson Liggett on the right. Justin West on the left. You see Liggett and West. Florida State's seen a heavy diet of southpaws from Louisville this weekend. Has neutralized a lot of the stronger left-handed bats. It's switched Faro from the left side where he's more natural, has more impact to the right side as he switch hits. And two, facing an 0-1. Shows bunt, right back to Phillips. Phillips will throw it and just beat Cantu. Down a second goes Dinges. Man. I think all the bunts we've seen today haven't quite been exactly where you want to place them, but this one's definitely good enough for a sacrifice. I think Cantu is looking for more of a hit here than a sacrifice. Phillips showing he can field his position as well. Cal Fisher, a legend for his walk-up song, by the way. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton. I, I, I wanted to say something last night when he got an A-B. I need to find out at some point, is that a tribute to someone that he knows in his family? Is that his favorite song growing up? Did he mash in the summer as a joke one year and continued? Or is it that he's a freshman and they picked a song for him? I hope that's it, <laughs> to be honest. But that. That is a banger of a song, though. Oh, yeah. That's not a joke it's of a, a song. It's That's a not one that I would throw on somebody as a joke. Well, I would for you coming up to hit to it. Okay. I would if you're coming to hit to it. Not, the, not, not a song that's actually supposed to get you pumped up. When you pitched, did you have a song that I you did. ran out to? I did. I what came out it? to uh, ACDC Shoot to Thrill. Man, that is peak you. That fits you to a T. <laughs> Fisher. Rolling that one. Good change up by Phillips, just barely off the plate. So a good job by Fisher laying off of that. That one gets away from Napleton. And down a third goes Dinges. Yes. Napleton's had his work cut out for him tonight, or today, I should say. And most of it's really not on him. I mean, he's working hard back there. A lot of these pitches been, you know, 54, 58 footers. That's really difficult trying to block that up as a catcher. Infield comes in for Louisville. Fisher doing a nice job staying alive. Phillips is bringing some off speed. And you see 429 batting average running the scoring position. I know he hadn't had a lot of at bats this year, but still. He did deliver last night to and center field in the ninth inning. 2-2, misses high. 
He's turned this into a really good at bat. So Louisville's got the infield drawn in. Eighth pitch of the A-B right here. Full count with the infield in. Left field, the freshman to the wall, it's gone! Tell you what, Cal Fisher, first start of his career at shortstop, delivers big right here in a tie game situation in an eight pitch at bat, and he sends one to the left center field to give the Knowles a two run lead. Link Jarrett said Cal Fisher might be the best freshman he's ever coached. Let me tell you what, he gets a fastball right there, outer third. And Din just knew it with the fingers up in the air. Just out of the reach. Great at bat by Cal Fisher right there. And for Cal Fisher, who got the start here today over Lodis. That's his second career home run. And the biggest to date of his young seminal career. And you saw everybody in there. Leiter, Cam Smith, Tibbs, all the all the leaders on that team giving Fisher a big hug right there. Coming out to the ovation from the crowd. There's a strike to West. Got to give the Knowles some credit. Louisville took the lead. Tibbs, two-run homer. Louisville ties it. Cal Fisher, two-run homer. West, weekly to first. And that is the second out of the inning. Not a hard play for Klein. For o. On the ground, Hoy stabs at it and throws across. Side retired. However, the long ball. I'll tell you what, we talk about Whitaker's efficiency in the fifth inning at 54 pitches. Say Drives it to left field. Park will hold it. And Ferrer's got it. First out of the fifth. Back to the top of the order. And Zion Rose. He'll be followed by Dylan Hoy. First pitch strike to Zion. He's got that triple in the third. Showed off the wheels getting around the bags. Hits that one pretty hard. Center field, deepest part, Ross. Had it measured running onto the track. Yeah, it looked like the sun at first might have had a little, playing a little trick on him there. This is Diamez Ross's first full-time action in nearly 10 games. Playing back in center field, getting reacclimated. He had a good start back, got to hit his first at bat. Oh, one 
misses outside, one and one. Whitaker's given up three runs and six hits. He attacks the zone. He makes the perfect Sunday starter. You see already closing in on five innings. And that was pitch number 61, the efficiency. Yep. And even with six hits and a walk. And you're still only at 61 pitches. Not a big strikeout guy. He does have enough in the tank to mix and match. The changeup plays as a plus pitch. He's worked on that slider throughout the years. It's got some slurve to it. Yeah, and it's gotten better. He hadn't thrown many today just because I think in the left he's in the lineup. He's thrown more of the changeup today. That one lifted out, carrying Ferrer, going back, going back right in front of the wall. He slams into the wall, but he holds on. Three fly ball outs. Number 10 on his jersey, Liggett, a veteran. Dan McDonald telling me about him this, I just say, the one really this morning is pretty much noon, <laughs> lunchtime. That Liggett was a rotation guy for them, has started throughout his career. It's plus stuff. Was battling some issues with his hip there in fall ball, the junior from Overland Park. So they're still trying to figure him out. And you see the numbers so far for him. A little bit higher ERA-wise than they'd like and that they're used to. But he's one of those guys, right, as the season evolves and things continue, you see that 661, things continue to evolve, as we said. If you get Liggett going, it changes the complexion of the pitching staff. Yeah. He gets Ross to lift it in the left, and it's caught for out number one. And you said it, I mean, he's all speed stuff, even to Ross right there. He showed the changeup, he showed the breaking ball, and he showed that pitch at 93 with the fastball. I mean, the stuff's there. He's got 16 strikeouts in 16 innings, so getting a strikeout an inning, he's just been hit a little bit here early in the season. Second team ACC last season. Was a semifinalist for the Dick Hauser Trophy. 14 starts on the mound, seven and two, with a 342 ERA. Yeah, those are pretty good numbers. Good breaking ball in there. You can see you've seen him throw two right there. The first one's 85, then that's the slower breaking ball there. Here's Cam Smith, 0-2, caught a piece, held on to by Napleton. There's a strikeout for Liggett for route number two of the fifth. And you see right here, just elevates the fastball after two off-speed pitches, and they're doing the same thing they did yesterday with Webster. They're just pitching backwards. And it makes that fastball look that much harder when you do see it. And in steps James Tibbs, who gave Florida State the lead back in the third. Tibbs, base hit in the left. He's got a couple of them now here today. And yeah, Louisville put that shift on. Tibbs didn't try to do too much, just went with the pitch, drove it in the left field. He's had a couple of hits. He's got three of them. He's three for three. Tibbs' average creeping back now to 400. Near 400, 394 to be exact after that hit. Yeah, you talk to scouts and they'll just all say the same thing, professional hitter. And it is. I mean, his eye, his approach. I mean, you see him get a pitch off the plate in, left on left earlier. He puts it out over the right field fence. There he gets a fastball away and just slaps it in the left field for a line drive base hit. I mean, the guy can do it all. He hits it to all parts of the field. He goes foul pole to foul pole. Jaime Ferrer stands back in, waggles the bat. 0-1 pitch, high. And the count evens. And a ball and a strike to Ferrer, who has a pair of Ks. 
here so far in the first and in the third. 0 for 2 officially. Pass through the left side. The six hole. When we talk about a ball having eyes. That's what we mean. Yeah, and FSU right here trying to do some more two out magic. You know, back in the day when I was playing Chip Baker, called it two out nightmare. Feels like a pivotal moment here in this game. As Marco Dinja steps in. He got two on, two outs, middle innings. Did that hit Dinges? No, it or hit his bat. It, it is bad. Did. Yeah, the bat. That's a strike. If you're Louisville, you definitely want to keep this thing at two runs. We get another look. Oh yeah. And you talk about a pivotal moment. We all know with one swing, Din just could open this game up. He did that on Thursday, game one. Wow, he watched that one right down Main Street. Yeah, I think he's <laughs> he's killing himself right now for that. Because with Liggett, right, right now it's open for Liggett. He could go slider, he could go with a big slower breaking ball, 12-6. There it was, just a little bit too far out. More of a no decision pitch right there. Dan McDonald hoping that Liggett can shut the door down here. There's some traffic on the base paths. Dingus pops it up. Napleton throws the mask in, makes the grab. Side retired. Couple of base runners put on. Nothing more. That Rowan kid. Holy moly, how do you hit that curveball? I'll tell you what, we talked about it last time on the air. I know I did. I was talking about that's the best I've seen his breaking ball look all year. I mean, he's typically been riding that fastball, but man, his breaking ball was outstanding last night. He goes, you told me that the bullpen had been struggling. And I said, one, I know you have a scout on all of them, so there's nothing I told you that was new. And two, they had been struggling. I told you the truth. Well, you're just seeing him bounce back from that. He said Joe Charles, Hudson Rowan. That's has some pieces to work with for the rest of the season for the Knowles. So Dan McDonald, a fan of what Florida State's been able to do, probably not specifically this weekend. I think he'd prefer to <laughs> right. rake right. and get out of here with three wins and, and then be a fan. But I think he appreciates good arm talent. And he's seen some at Florida State this weekend. We talked about Charles and the lack of innings due to injuries, but a premium recruit. Hudson Rowan, another kid that Florida State staff loves as a freshman, a big time competitor with elite metrics on that curveball. Yeah, and both of them, one from the left side, one from the right, in that mid to high 90s, and then both with elite breaking balls. And so they're hoping that Brennan Oxford can continue that trend this weekend. He is behind Benson, 3-1 here in the count. Nice Goes back to that breaking ball. ball. Yeah, now it's 3-2. Yeah. Kind of the trend for both teams with that pitching a little backwards, 3-1. You're looking for a fastball and you get a breaking ball. Oxford threw scoreless relief against Florida on Tuesday in Jacksonville with pitches like that. Off speed, inside corner. And there's a backwards kick. Yeah, really good pitch right here. Again, full count. You saw it on 3-1. Again, sitting fastball, gets the breaking ball. Good job by West framing that up. Good pitch. Here's Matt Klein. That one backed up on Oxford there. Overthrew it. And he's sophomore playing first base here today.
They think he's going to be the future catcher of the program. And McDonald said, keep an eye on him. Last season, he was hitting 300 before suffering a season-ending injury after 10 games. He's ahead of the count, 3-0. They've had some really good catchers at Louisville. Yeah, they have. I mean, Will Smith, first to come to mind. There's a strike. Henry Davis, another one that comes to mind now playing for the Pirates. Five pitch walk and Klein will try down to first. And Oxford's fastball's just been a little elevated right now. Not finishing his pitch, staying a little tall. Pitch strike to Napleton. We've talked throughout the weekend. Napleton, who's 0 for 1 today, has got a walk, so he's reached base. Napleton led D2 in home runs last season with 29 of them and RBIs with 87 at Quincy University. Lifts this out to right center. Park will hold it. Ross calls off tips. And he makes the grab for the second out of the inning. Yeah, for the most part, Knowles have done pretty good this weekend against Napleton. Gavin Keelan stepping in with two down. Speed misses the outside corner. Yeah, the crowd not happy, but that pitch is definitely outside. Now 2-0 to Keelan, who's got a pair of base hits today. A single in the second, a double in the fourth. Three hits on the weekend. Found the strike zone, two and one. Brennan Oxford, who started his career in the ACC at Wake Forest. And a standout summer in the Cape Cod League two summers ago, prior to coming to Tallahassee. As Keelan's got a three-hit game. Nearly identical to the double he hit in his last at bat. He's going to come into second base, slot, oh! Wow. Oh my goodness, and he makes contact with Fisher. And Florida by the New York Mets decided to go to Carolina to play for Mike Fox. Hit on the ground. Oh, he's only going to need one pitch. Fisher puts it away to Cantu. Not enough time to tell a story. Pulls on top by two over the cards. It's Cantu, Fisher, and West. Six, seven, eight. Due and look, up for Florida State. And Liggett just started Cantu off with a dirty changeup. Another off speed pitch makes it one and one. Daniel Cantu said before the game. As that one misses the zone. Being a part of a lineup like this has been so easy for him. He said it, it takes all the pressure off. You come out to the park, you don't feel like you have to go three for five every day. He said, I don't feel like I have to hit double digit home runs. As he swings through that one, two and two. 
Yeah, and I think it. I think he speaks for everybody too when he says that because I mean it doesn't put that pressure that you feel like, man, I've got to come make the big hit. Two two, raise the eye level, and Cantu strikes out. I think it's been pretty consistent with what he's trying to do here, pitching backwards with off-speed stuff down and out of the zone, and then he climbs the ladder with the fastball. You see that 92 miles an hour and up. Cantu just not able to catch up to it. There's a strike. Cal Fisher. Hits this in the left field, another base hit. I think you're starting to see why the Knoll staff is so hot on him. That's another base hit for the freshman, I and mean, it's advanced tools. Yeah, breaking ball down. Just goes down and gets it and drives it in the left field. And Jackson West. He's 0 for 2 today. On the ground, could be 2 again. To second for one, four, six, three. The pitcher's best friend. And the Cardinals get. Here's Dorsey making his 10th appearance, two and two on the year. 5.51 ERA. Base hit for Humphrey. Now you're really gonna see just two pitches from Dorsey. He's gonna be the big breaking ball in his fastball. Fastball's gonna be in the mid 90s, low to mid 90s. Say it. Takes the first pitch ball. And the Seminoles have been hoping for Dorsey to be a guy that can come in and shut it down. He's got major league stuff, elite fastball, big breaking ball. However, command has been an issue for him. Talking to scouts really since he was in junior college. It's one told me not really a guy who threw strikes consistently, even in Juco ball. It's the stuff that they dream on. A fastball that has ride and life to it. A couple of big pitches. It's been up and down for him so far this season at Florida State, but they would like him to be a shutdown arm for them in the pen, but he's given up three grand slams on the year. They've put him in with traffic, hasn't gone well. The Clemson series was a complete nightmare with Dorsey on the hill. And so this is another opportunity for him to try and establish a spot, especially with the younger pitchers that are starting to pitch well and Joe Charles starting to emerge. Yeah, and like you said, Hudson Rowan as well last night. You know, and you got some other arms in the pen who have been doing it, but this is definitely one of the guys that they really want to be the guy at the end of the game. One, two to Ali Say it. Lift it out to right and foul.
Hit hard. Fisher going to second. Throw to first. Not in time. I don't know how the Knowles even got one there. Give Fisher a lot of credit. Deep in the hole, it's short. This freshman continues to impress in game three. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You've had the offense. Now he's showing you the defense. Made the play up in the middle earlier in the game and almost got the out at first. And then that right there with the backhand. Quick, quick transa transition right there to get the ball to second. Zion Rose. So Humphrey cut down. Only force out Alisea on first. He's two for two on stolen base attempts on the year. You see from Dorsey again, elite fastball. 95 can pump it up. 97, 98 at times. From the left-hand side, easy to see why scouts think he's got a future if they can iron some things out with his mechanics. Yeah, it's just getting, like you said, in the zone more with his pitches. Swing and a miss. Check back to first. Ali say it. Back in there. One thing Dorsey does have as well is he does have a pretty good move to first base. With a few pickoffs already this year. They got him picked off. Throw down to second. Ali say it. Gun down. There's two outs in the inning. I mean, didn't get it out of my mouth pretty much quick enough, did I? See this right here, just great job. Good move. Right field, lifted out to right, carrying Rose. Will miss a home run by a few feet. As Tid Hauser. A crowd over 5,000 to watch the Knowles and the Cardinals play in this rubber match. They're usually phenomenal series, and we've got another one that has delivered so far this weekend. And this is why you love the state of Florida this time of year. Other than the rain, you do get weather in the spring in the high 70s, low 80s. And the rain came through on Wednesday and allowed Thursday to Saturday to be beautiful for an ACC slate. One that both teams really need. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you see the sky too. It's just a gorgeous day for baseball. Feels like we haven't had a chance to see Faro hit a ton from this left handed side. Yeah, I was just about to say, you finally get him turned around to that left side. He's got three home runs, two of those coming from the left-handed side. Actually, I think I, all three. Is that correct, Chris? It is. His first one here, open a weekend, right field, and then the two against Florida oh, yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, two home run game against the Gators. As he swings and misses there. I like what I've seen so far from Carson Liggett. Yeah, I mean, I've actually been really impressed with all their pitchers. I know their numbers don't show it, but they pitch behind, I mean, pitch backwards, mix it up. Good command of their off speed stuff. What a bunt from Ross. The throw down, though, is in time. Napleton shot out of a cannon from behind the plate. Tell you what, we talked about Napleton early in the game getting so much work back there trying to block stuff up. But you're right, he shot out of there like a guy could be shot out of a cannon. I mean, look at how quick he comes up out of there. That's a really good bunt by Ross. Napleton made it look easy.
Two down on the inning. Cam Smith. The single back in the third extended his hitting streak to six games. Cam came into the weekend top 10 in the country in batting average, second in hits. A couple more here today is going to aid that cost. Again, FSU's done a pretty good job this weekend against the shift. You saw right there, they had everybody on the left side of second base. Cam Smith not trying to do too much, just goes with it, hits it the other way. Florida State coaching staff, and this summer with Cam Smith, tried to work on his path to the plate and to the ball, trying to keep it stiller. Less action allows him to get to the ball faster. And he's so strong as he got a mound visit from McDonald. And no. They said you don't really need to do a ton to impact the baseball and try and drive it out of the park. The power is going to be appearance of the year for West. Comes in a big spot. That's a good start. Flips it in there for a strike. Yep. First pitch change up left on left. You see their exit velocity on that home run was 97. 358 feet. That's where you want to hit it, 358. Right over the screen. There's a strike, 0 oh 2. Tibbs is 3 for 3. Good looking hitter. Top of the zone with the fastball at 88. Tibbs stays alive. James Tibbs won the Cape Cod League's home run derby over the summer. Talk about him leading Florida State. Now with those 11 blasts. 67 miles an hour. Try to snap the breaking ball in and it didn't know. go where he wanted it. I don't to know go. about snapping it out. They tried to roll it in at 67 miles an hour. One, two. High and in. Pretty consistently, consistently. Chris, we've seen off speed, fastball, off speed, fastball. Yeah. Definitely haven't seen back-to-back -back fastballs. Almost got away from Klein at first. Cam Smith is two for two on stolen base attempts this season. Two, two, just missed. Napleton tried to sell it. Was ready to hop back to the dugout. Yeah, I think Napleton really wanted that pitch. But we talked about this. We talked about it with Coach McDonald. That low fastball, you just haven't been getting that a lot this year. It's a full count. Tibbs, left center field, base hit. And Smith, who was running on the pitch, will advance to third easily. Runners on the corner. And James Tibbs ties a career high with four hits in the game. Tell you what, got a breaking ball. He slowed it down, and Tibbs just drives it the other way. Just what you kind of teach the hitters to do. See this right here, slow breaking ball. Tibbs just stays on it, drives it to left field. Great piece of hitting. Good two-strike approach. Chris, he stays in his back half so well. He really does. I mean, that's why you see some of his backside home runs so well, too, that look like fly balls that just carry out of the park. As good as you'll find shifting his weight. Yeah, he's got the holes on the corners. Jaime Ferrer. First pitch, whoa, down center. That's not usually a pitch Jaime lays off of. No, usually a very aggressive hitter. Ferrer 
Mariners one for three. Slow breaking ball. He's down and in one and one. I mean, that is a slow breaking ball. You are right. <laughs> That's what 68. He throws that change up at 78. This fastball at 88. I mean. One, one off the glove of Wes. It's going to score a run. Keelan did his best to get to it, not in time. And the Knowles have now doubled their lead and lead at six to three. A big run right there for the Knowles. Some more two out magic for the Knowles today. You see right here, Ferrer drives it right back. The West almost makes a great catch on that play. Important insurance run in for Florida State in the bottom of the seventh. That ball was hit hard enough to where it might have squeaked through to the outfield anyway. Well, it definitely is getting through if he doesn't glove it. Valiant effort there from West. However, two on still. The two outs for Dingus. There's that change up by West, 79. Now 2 and 0. Oh. Kind of a dangerous situation right here for West. 2-0 count to a guy who takes violent hacks. Two-o right in there. Wow, kind of kind of surprised. Didn't just wasn't hacking there, but might be taken in this situation. I'm not sure. Now the two-one pitch. Hit hard in the right field. That's going to get down. It's going to deflect off Humphrey's glove. One run's going to score easily. Ty McGay, he's waving in another. Rounding second in the third. A two-run base hit for Dingus. Opens it up here in the seventh. Tell you what, Knowles getting on it right there. I think... Now I kind of see why he lays off that fastball. They're sitting on the off-speed stuff. It's slow enough that they can sit back on it and make the adjustment. And Din just did just that. Got something off-speed and up in the zone and drove it to right field. That'll be a single for Din Takes two bases on Try and figure out week to week. And it does. And a guy that we haven't even talked about who got a start today is Cal Fisher. He had a huge hit. So, I mean, actually two big hits. And he's come up big defensively. This is Jared Lesman pitching. The junior from Cumberland, Wisconsin. Six foot two, good ERA, 279 in nine and two thirds innings. And shocker, it's another left hander. I mean, it seems like that's all they roll out, but they've got some good ones. I think Jared was intrigued as you see Lesman's numbers. Oh, two, right by Cantu. And that's going to end the inning, not before Florida State has created some breathing. But I'm pretty average. It's amazing. You sip on something and you get better. I was going to say, Isn't that I'm, weird? I'm a little better when I have a beer in the left hand and throw it with my right. Yep, responsibly. Excuse me. Absolutely. Yeah. Max Williams, defensive replacement for Jaime Ferrer. Something the coaching staff's actually wanted to do if everyone's healthy is have Williams available late in the game for defense, have him available to pinch hit for power. Yeah, and I mean, he's definitely someone that comes in the game now. If he did have to hit, 
you're not losing anything at the bat. And Dylan Hoy will be followed by Benson and Klein. Two, three, four. You get the sense as that one's fouled, hit pretty well, but deep into those bleachers and left. If the Cardinals are going to make a push at this thing in their final six outs, this is huge for them to try and chip away and a huge chance for Dorsey to have a shutdown in it. Yeah, because this is the partner lineup right here. You definitely want to get these guys out. Breaking ball misses. Count goes full. On the ground, going to be a tough play deep in the hole. Smith, not in time. Boy runs well, and he's got an infield hit. Yeah, nice play by Cam. But like you said, Hoy just got too good of wheels. We talk about this being a big weekend for Louisville. Look what's coming up next. A little rivalry action at Kentucky. NC State's really good under Elliott Avent again. A home series there. And then midweek against Western Kentucky, UVA who can rake. One of the best offenses in the country for Brian O'Connor. And then capping it off with more rivalry. How about those two games on our ESPN networks on the national side? Wildcats, Cardinals. Always a great rivalry. And getting better in baseball as Kentucky started to pick things up. Yeah, there's a lot of good talent over the Louisville area. And they pull it. Both schools are picking both talent up. We talk about the ACC being loaded. So you got a top 25 series for Louisville at Florida State and then NC State, Virginia, both ranked in the top 25. Those are your next two. Mm. That's, that's tough. You know, Louisville team that has lost eight consecutive ACC series dating back to last season. It was early April against Boston College of 2023 for Dan McDonald's group in their last series victory. I believe they swept Boston College actually that weekend. Somehow still number one in the last 10 years in winning percentage that's in the even, ACC, that's even, even after all that. That's even crazier. That's how dominant the Cardinals had been. I mean, that's, when you really think about that, you go, if they were to, if the FSU's to hold on and win this one, that'd be nine series in a row that they lost. And to still have the best percent, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Speaks volumes about the what Coach McDonald has done there, in Louisville. Five trips to Omaha under McDonald, back to back in 13 and 14 on the grounds. Florida State throws it away. Going to third will be Hoy. And that's going to be an error on Faro. That's a tough one. That's a tough one there because that's a tailor made 4 6 3 double. That Faro and Lodi's had was pretty good all year up the middle. Yeah, but the, the difference is there, and you're right, but you're still having it's still a feed. You're used to the feed. He knows where he's got to go. It's just he just, just had a bad feed there. It happens. Faro's played a great second base so far this year. You're going to have him from time to time. Seventh error on the weekend for Florida State. More than double what they had coming into the series for the year. Dorsey reaching back for a little extra right here. O2 to Klein. 94 off the hands. Yeah, a little too good right there, O2. The pitch is supposed to be off the plate away. So the Cardinals have some life here in the eighth. Breaking ball dropped by West. Not sure if that was in the zone, but 
Certainly didn't help. No. Hoy at third, Benson at first. Nobody down. Swing and a miss. How about Carson Dorsey calling his own number to record the first out of the inning? Yeah, great breaking ball right here. Down in the zone, down out of the zone. You see this, the bite on this breaking ball right here. Great pitch. Just the fourth strikeout for Florida State and their pitching staff here today. And Apleton sends it back. Oh, and one. The Knowles came in top five in the country in K's per nine before this series started. Well, they helped that again on Thursday night and then again yesterday. Yeah, 17 of them Thursday night. Yeah. 12 from Leiter alone. That one gets between the legs of West. A run's going to score. Hoyt touches home. And the lead now just four. Louisville cuts the deficit. Give that a passed ball on Jackson West. The run is unearned. Yeah, I think Jackson would agree with that. He makes that play 10 out of 10 times most of the time. So Benson able to advance to second as well. And the one, two. High in the zone, two and two. West had to go up to get it. Napleton has the pop in the bat with one swing to make this thing awful interesting. Definitely does. This is the guy for them. They won up against a left-handed pitcher, too. You saw the number. It was up just up there. Batting 550 this year against left-handed pitching. Former D2 first team All American. Swing and a miss, high in the zone. 95 with life. Yep, that's his fastest one of the day so far. Reached back for a little extra. You see this right here, he buries this in on the inner third. Great pitch. Naples are not able to catch up. Keelan lifts it foul territory. Smith giving chase. Oh, he nearly had it. Nick the glove as he jumped over the railing. Tell you what, what a heck of an effort by Cam Smith right here. He almost makes an unbelievable catch. You see this right here on the replay. Going over the fence, just missing that. Down on the zone with the heater. Now a ball and a strike. Keelan has had some success here today. Three for three. Couple of doubles. Hitting in the six hole. That's a really good pitch. Very good breaking ball by Dorsey. And you said it earlier, I mean, the stuff's there for Dorsey. The breaking ball and the fastball are both big league pitches. It's just the consistency in the zone with him. On the ground, Cantu stays down on it. Calls off Dorsey, and he steps on the back. That retires a little. Seminoles going with the Golds here on a Saturday. Fisher watches the first pitch from Lessman. Outside for a ball. Still want 
Nike to go back and give us the old golds. Those are pretty sweet, no doubt. I know I had to show them to you today. You see a couple of fans wearing some of the old gold hats right here. Really good pitch. Wow. Good, good looking breaking ball. Man. Cal Fisher. Two run homer in the fourth. A single in the sixth. There it is right yeah. there. That's good. Swing and a miss. Lesman gets the better of the freshman. Yeah, he threw the, threw the breaking ball pitch before in the zone. Then went out of the zone right here. Able to get Fisher to chase. Eight-hole hitter, the catcher, Jackson West. Tell you what, Lesman's come in. Been a strike machine. West, who started Childs High School here in Tallahassee, decided to go to Alabama, played in the SEC for a year, had pretty good numbers and limited at-bats. Makes his way back home. And has been a force for Florida State near the bottom of the order. Lead-off hitter type approach for Jackson West. You are 100% on that. Definitely has that lead-off hitter approach. It's been fun to watch how many at-bats he can work. A good two-strike hitter. Fights back and counts. This one, too, misses outside. Yeah, when the season's all said and done, I'd like to see how many pitches he, he will have seen on the year. Because I bet it probably would lead the team. Works another full count. That's what he does. <laughs> Unbelievable. You got some versatility in the bottom of your order there. You got pop, athleticism. A different look with a guy who will take pitches. That one over the backstop. And West works the walk. I'm telling you, Mike Martin Sr. meet what they would have loved Jackson oh, West. I mean, it's the type of hitter that Eleven absolutely. was trying to form year in and year out. Yeah, well, it was. Let's work as many pitches as we can get this guy to throw. Florida State led the nation in walks year after year after year. Under 11. Yep. The thing was, you got on base, and then you had thumpers, yeah. MLB level. Yes. That would send it out of the park. You had a lot of crooked numbers. And it wasn't just the walks either. It was just hit by pitches too. I mean, while I was here, we had Jose Zabala one year. I want to say he got hit 25 times. Maybe been more than 25. It just I mean, we had a drill that you did on wearing pitches, how to wear it. Rocho's bunt, pulls the bat back. They say he did not go. I think it caught the uniform. Oh, OK. Yeah, and it's a hit by pitch. Yep. And Mike Mazza immediately checked down to first to Jake Botek, the first base umpire. Great job. I mean, he did. He knew it hit him, but wasn't sure if he went. Checked. They said prize right here to see Diamez square as well. Ross's first full game starting back in a while. He had a single in the first. Ground out, fly out, ground out since. And is that going to be it for Lesman? Home loss last night. How would they respond? Up four with three outs to play with. It is Ross behind a 94 mile an hour fastball. And sends it the other way into the left field bleachers. Yeah, and you walk away here at the Knowles can walk away with a series win. I still feel like they feel in their heart they should have left Clemson two and you know winning that series with two out of three. 
There were a number of folks as this 0-1 pitch misses the zone one and one. Number of folks nationally, scouts, former players who were texting me during the weekend and said the Knowles look like the better team. If you look at rosters, Florida State looks better than Clemson. Now environment aside, away from home, finishing games out, but you lead eight to one and 11 to two. You've done something right for large portions of that game. Yeah, and I, and I think they're gonna get another crack at them probably in the tournament, so. Clemson going down to Coral Gables. I believe they're leading big in their series finale. That's a rubber match there against Miami. It's a good Clemson team. Not they, to take anything away from that veteran lineup that mashes. I was gonna say not at all. I mean, you still got to come back and do what they did, and they did, and they did that. Yeah, you know, coming up, getting the hits. You got to give them credit as well. They're a good team. And Clemson's hungry. Last season, the way it ended in their regional, they were the hottest team in baseball heading into postseason, and they got essentially walked off by Tennessee in I mean, the winner's bracket game, and it derailed the weekend for them. It did. Here's the one-two to Ross. Two on, one down. The leadoff hitter against Kobe. That gets to the backstop. Napleton's had a tough time keeping the ball in front of him here this afternoon. Both runners advance 90 feet. And with that being said, though, not on Napleton. Not that I time. Mean, no, and he's had one or two, but most of them have not been. I mean, early in the game, like I said, trying to block 54 and 58 footers, it's really tough on a catcher. You see the face of Dan McDonald. Infield comes in here for the cards. Ross stays alive. I'll Pretty tell you. Breaking ball. Yeah, I was just saying, Cobra's come in 94 with an 84 mile an hour slider. I mean, good stuff. Do the 2 2 again. This is inside. I think Ross thought he had walked. He's smiling, taps his chest, my bad. He definitely did. You see the big grin that Diamez Ross pretty much always has on his face. He was fired up because he knew he'd had a good at bat. Well, it's not done yet. Look at that smile. 3-2 pitch coming now. We'll have another full count. Again, Ross fouls it away. And that one at 95. West at third. Faroe at second. This will be the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Cobert set for the full count. Ross chops it, throws coming home, not going to be in time. Run scores. Tell you what, it was just that little bobble by Alisea that gave West enough time to get in there and get underneath the tag. Ross hits this ball right on the screws. Just enough time to get West underneath the tag. That little bobble. In the inning, alive now, first and third, one out. And that again, that's a big insurance run for Florida State, as that takes a grand slam out of the picture to tie it. Ball 96 to Cam Smith misses the inside corner. With some sink on it, too. Ogre's got some good stuff. Nine runs, 12 hits for Florida State. Smith 
on the ground. To second for one, the return. The double play. And that will retire the side. Louisville's turned a number of doubles. That'll be fun. And then you and I, my friend, back on the call for the Miami series, the final two games. Yeah. Tell you what, the Canes at home at Mark Light have some magic brewing. And uh, J.D. Arriaga, now in his first season as head coach, they've been playing good baseball down there. It'll be a really fun series. There's something special, right, about Knowles Canes in baseball here. Oh, you're already shaking your head here oh. in the booth. Oh, man. It just leaves such a sour taste in my mouth. I mean, to know my last year I had to lose to them by one run for the national championship, that never sit well. So it, it's tough to even say the U. Ugh. But Chris, I was that, just trying to set up the series. I didn't want you to <laughs> navigate it into a dark area of your life. Uh, with that being said, though, J.D. Artiega, as a coach and as a person, I mean, he is Miami through and through, and he is going to do great things there at that university as a head coach. A lot of work to do for Florida State before it, including getting the final three outs of this one. Dorsey misses high. You got Armstrong and Abraham both in the pen. Last I checked. I think Jared going to make sure to try and shut this one down. Hit hard, base hit. Michael Lippi, pinch hitter. He's on with a single. Good A-B right there. Worked the count full, got a fastball, drove it right through the five hole. Michael Lippi was hitting for Eddie King Jr. Lead off single, pass the baton. I'll tell you what, Lippi's hitting 362 before that at bat. For the chances that he's gotten this year, he's taking advantage of them. Isaac Humphrey. First pitch misses. Humphrey two for three. He's had a pretty good weekend in Tallahassee. Strong series at the plate. Now 2-0. Oh. Dorsey at 45 pitches. See Armstrong and Abraham, as we mentioned. Actually, I think that might be short now with Armstrong up. Here's the 2-0. This is high 3-0. After Humphrey, it's Alisea. Unless Louisville goes to a pinch hitter. Four pitch walk. Two on, nobody out. And Link Jarrett out of the dugout. It's Ali, excuse me, there is a pinch hitter. It's Dickerson, number 20. I had a notion and a thought that they might go to a pinch hitter. And it is going to be Dickerson. Dickerson hitting 333 on the year. 1-1 one, one after that fastball. Corbin Dickerson, pinch ran in last night's game. There's a strike, now one and two. Good pitch, hadn't seen that called much this weekend, but good pitch. Solid work from Dickerson to stay alive. That was one of Armstrong's 
some better off-speed pitches. Shout out to Adam Hamm, who has helped run Dick Hauser Stadium's facilities his last game. Well, a couple of years here in Tallahassee. I wish him all the best. I'm sure he'd like Florida State to lock this one down. Again, another good job by Dickerson there. Fighting that one's even a better breaking ball than the last one. One, two coming. Now to Dickerson. Two on, nobody down. Off the hands, Faro makes the catch as he gets onto the grass. Zion Rose. MLB scouts love the future for Zion Rose. Really love his bat speed, how he projects, the athleticism to play multiple positions. We've seen him in the outfields. He's a catcher by trade, designated hitter for large portions of the season. Coach McDonald told me right before this game, he said, don't be surprised in two years when we come back here that this guy's our starting catcher. And I was like, wait a minute, what? And like you said, I didn't realize at the time that he had come in as a catcher. And he's like, man, you should see him behind. He says, we got to clean him up a little bit, but his athleticism. That time, a mile high. Faro again. Two outs, both to the null second baseman. And the Cardinals are down to their final chance. So far, Army has come in and done exactly what they wanted him to do. Filling up the zone. Strike to Hoy. Really good looking breaking ball there. Edging him backwards. <laughs> Try to go to the same spot. That one off. One and one. Good miss. Good pitch. Good miss. Fastball finds the zone, down to their final strike. Knowles trying to capture the series against the Cardinals. Hauser faithful will come to their feet. Boy stays alive. Armstrong heating it up a little bit for him. 92 on that fastball, trying to sneak it by him. If Hoy can get on, JT Benson will be due up next. One two pitch, Hoy watches it bend out of the zone. Two and two. It's been an excellent series so far, the rubber match between Florida State and Louisville will go the way of the Knowles. Armstrong, Kays, Hoy, and FSU.